Alrighty, so on today's episode of uh, what the cat dragon, <laughs> we have a 19, uh, we're going to say late 50s, early 60s Ford 4000 Industrial. So we bought this, well, Papa bought this a couple of years ago, and you know, he's used the post hole digger uh, to rebuild his chicken coop. Uh, he's got a plow attachment for the front, he uses it to do his driveway. His driveway is about an eighth mile long. So it, it you know, it gets a little daunting after a while. So we have to, we're try, gonna try and switch it over to 12 volt, because this is still the original six volt. And in the winter time, she's a little slow to crank. But, and we also need to replace the belt up here for the power steering pump. So the power steering pump is leaking. We do have to try and get a new one. But you can see, let's see. We had to take one of these adjustable belts to try and make it work. And it worked for a little while, but it's just not ideal. So in order to put the new belt on the front, we have to disassemble the uh, pump down here. So you've got the pump that runs through the front, straight on through to the crank. So we have to take that off so we can get this, this old, well, this one we could de uh, detach. But to get the new belt on, we have to remove all that to get the new belt on. Uh, the reason that there is a exhaust cuff blare here around the um, radiator hose is because the belt was slapping the radiator hose and pretty much burning a hole through it. So we're going to try and switch it over to 12 volt. So unfortunately we have to remove the whole front loader assembly. We also have to remove everything here because this tank is not bolted in properly. Uh, the guy we bought it from never bolted it in properly, or he had bolts in it, and they vibrated out, which is going to happen with these old school tractors. So they vibrated out, and now it's loose and vibrating everywhere. So there's a couple odds and ends that we have to do. But uh, we're going to try and get this loader off first, and then we can pull it back the tractor out and get to work on everything else. So to remove this loader, from what we can tell, we've got pins on either side in the rear here. It's got one on this side, one on that side. And then up in the front here, we have two massive bolts here, one on this side, one on the other side. So what I'm hoping is, is that we take out the rear pins, we'll take out the front pins, put a jack underneath the back here to take the tension off and drop pull out the rear pin so we can drop the rear end and hopefully everything will drop down enough to where we can back the tractor up a little bit and then me and Archie are going to grab either side and hopefully we can lift it up enough for Papa to back the tractor out so it's going to be a, a daunting process but we'll get it done Papa's hiding his face and uh, we'll check back with you when uh, we have some progress. Alrighty, so update. We went through and we pulled, we had to pull all the fenders, well not fenders, the encasing here, everything off around in order to get down, down in there. There's two bolts that connect to this pump. So I removed the two nuts, popped it off, that's loose. We've just removed the two main bolts from the front. And I said we were going to take those ones out. We ended up taking the ones out where it connected directly to the tractor frame itself. Because we feel that when we're putting it back together, it'll be a little bit easier on us. Hopefully. So we've gone through and removed the pins in the rear. Now I've got a jack on my side. Papa's got a jack on his side, and we're going to jack it up a little bit. We're going to start the tractor up. We're going to back it up, and then hopefully, me and Archie over there, will be able to grab the back end. We'll be able to pivot it 
up high enough to get it over the wheels. If not, I do have another option here, but that's like a, it's gonna be our last resort kind of option. So we're gonna try this first and we'll let you know how it goes. Maybe somebody will lose a finger. <laughs> Alrighty, so you can see we got the loader assembly separated from Papa's tractor. We, uh, we had to do some uh, ingenuity here. It's some redneck uh, crap here. So we got a chain hoist over on that tree. Got a six foot strap wrapped around there, six foot strap here. You have a 20 foot strap going up to the loader itself, up to the high pivot point there. So we took the quad master here, ran the cable out and put it on there because you could tell that this is not straight with the tree. We had Archie here, he pulled back and it gave it enough lift to get it up over the front steering. So right now we got it up on jack stands. She seems pretty sturdy, so we're gonna leave it right where she sits. So we did notice that we have a leak up here. It looks like the hose clamp cut into the hose. So we got a leak up here and you know, leak around here. So there's a couple little leaks here and there. We'll get her done. Alrighty, so as you can see, the sun is going down. It's getting a little too dark for us to be doing work out here. But we have the alternator on. I'm gonna double check this bracket here. I think it might go behind it. I don't know, I'm gonna double check it tomorrow. It's getting too dark. But we have to replace the belt in the front, the belt for the power steering pump tomorrow. We had, I've never done this before. I've never done this six volt to 12 volt conversion. So this is a little tricky for me. Um, the kit we bought off of eBay came with directions, you know, and they're just generalized directions. You can see, you know, red wire to here, white wire, you know, so on and so forth. I'm not gonna go into great detail. But on the plus side, with the key on, we replaced our uh, start button. It's got no gas in it, so it's not a, uh, she shouldn't fire off, but. She turns over, key switch works. Everything else seems pretty good. So tomorrow she'll hopefully only be, you know, figuring out the little odds and ends, making sure everything's lined up perfectly, uh, doing the new belt for the alternator fan, and then putting a new belt on for the power steering pump. Still trying to convince Papa to buy a new one. He said he's gonna look it up tonight. So we can do that after everything's together. It's not that big of a deal. Um, we got our new battery. We made sure we put new uh, cables on. Um, for those of you out there that don't know, these tractors come, well, they came from the factory with a positive negative. So the negative was positive on these. They were reversed. So it threw me off. It threw Pop off. I know he's, uh, he knows a little more about these than I do. But it was the first one that we would owned where the negative was actually the positive. So there's multiple videos on that. If you want to look up how that works, basically it just turns the entire chassis of the tractor into a positive. And then your negative, your positive becomes the negative on the battery. So it turned over really slow, like a six volt would. And just like I said in the beginning of the video, we were trying to make sure to work for Papa, who's sitting over there for the winter. So hopefully tomorrow when we get light, we'll get back at it and uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Dixie! Also, Papa corrected me when I turned off the camera that I forgot to say that we put a new voltmeter in. So originally the, uh, temperature sensor was here the temperature gauge was here but on these old tractors it was a cable they're trying to cover me in the tarp it was a cable that ran down and they blocked it off on the block already so we figured we'll just put this in uh, we got to try and get the oil pressure gauge and fuel gauge to work as well only for a luxury for that young man over there all right so now we'll talk to you tomorrow all right next day here you got me today Got Papa here with me. Uh, we're back on the Ford. 
working on it. We removed the radiator and we got the alternator belt off because we're going through right now. Uh, we were sizing up the old belt versus the new belt. Or I don't know where Stitch has put the new belt, but. Right there. Okay, so we got the new belt up here and the old belt down there. We're sizing it up, they're the same size. Uh, it was a bit of a chore to try and get the belt off. We ended up sneaking it through right here, but we pulled the radiator out. Notice the fluid's nasty, so I think we're gonna flush that as well while we're in here, because might as well. Um, Papa, you're going to do what? You're gonna go grab a fuel gauge and a couple miscellaneous odds and ends? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you gotta get a, a power steering pump belt too, right? Yeah. So He had it, and I don't know where he put it. Nah, it happens. So, Papa's gonna run to uh, the local tractor store. And he's gonna pick up a couple odds and ends, and we're gonna keep digging into this thing. Sweet. All right, so we're going through. Jesus, that's good. That's staying on the video. <laughs> Don't you do it. All right, so we're going through. We got new belts on, put a 40 inch here, and whatever came with the power steering pump there, or uh, excuse me, what came with the alternator 12 volt kit there. We put the fan back on. Right now, we're flushing the cooling system out. So, compared to the color of the stuff that's in there, that looks a lot better. Uh, we're gonna go flush the radiator next. And then, from there, we're gonna remount the radiator, hook up the cooling lines. We've got a bracket to make, I'm sure Stitch has talked about, for the gas tank, out of some flat stock. So we're gonna do that. And then, uh, we're gonna go from there. So just had to run a little bit of an errand, so he's going to be out of the picture for a few. But we'll check back with you in a little bit. Up, what you just saw us doing is uh, we got flat stock and I've got some markings in it. I'm gonna cut it here because this will fit underneath the gas tank. And then we've got somewhere in here has got to get drilled out. This has got to get cut out. And then we've got two more holes that got to get drilled out. And that's all for mounting the fuel tank back on top here because we've got a bracket here and a bracket here. So this is gonna get cut up and then. We're gonna weld nuts to it, and we're gonna go from there. Sweet. All right, so here's one of the brackets that we cut and welded up. The other one we already mounted up in here. It's got a notch and a couple holes drilled in with some wet, uh, nuts welded on the back of them. So we're gonna take the fuel tank, and it's, uh, that locating notch that's cut into it is gonna slide into this bolt here. That's gonna locate the fuel tank, and then there's gonna be two bolts that come up through here into the welded nuts same on this side and then we're gonna go from there so we're gonna set this up to time-lapse and me and Papa are gonna try and give it a shot getting this thing mounted up what do you say Papa you think we got this all right we'll check back with you guys after the time-lapse <laughs>
All right, so we got the gas tank on. We fought with it for, what do you say, an hour? Something like that. And now we're gonna try first fires. I know it's a stupid question. Do you have the coil and the start button wired to the ignition switch? Because I was thinking if you had the start button not wired to the ignition switch, it's turning without spark. No, it only works with the key. It only works with the can? Okay. All right, we're picking up where we left off. Um, I'm using my phone for this part of the video, so if the quality is different, we already know it's different. The phone that we use in the shop is dead. Did you plug it in? No, because uh, I think your phone's on the charger and it was at like 40%. You could have plugged it in. No, nah, I figure your personal phone is more important. Whatever. All right, so what did you discover? All right, so going through, we got defeated last weekend between the tank, fighting with the tank, and everything else. Uh, we were thinking that it needed a three post starter, but I was looking online. Papa had bought a four post starter. So I started looking online today because fresh pair of eyes on it. And I was reading where the extra terminal is, where the eye terminal is for ignition. They, uh, the older Fords, they ran a positive wire over. Cause if you look at this coil here, it's got a resistor on it. And because it has this resistor, it doesn't get the full 12 volts until it starts running. So by putting, uh, sending it from the starter solenoid over to the positive on the coil, it gives it that full 12 volts for the initial startup. And then it stops and allows it to go through its own electrical system. So we checked for spark, right? We checked for, we had spark, we had everything. It just wasn't getting enough power in through the coil to get it to start up on its own. Yeah. So we, I, Grabbed some wire that I had laying around, threw some eyelets on it, and uh, we tested it, and she fires. So we're gonna stick it on there. We want it to run. We want to test our uh, the voltmeter, the ohmmeter, or volt. Yeah, not ohmmeter, voltmeter. So we want to test that to make sure that it's working, everything's charging properly, and as long as it is, then we can go through and fight with the tank some more and get the correct bolts in there. I thought we got the bolts in. I thought the we heat shield. Remember. Uh, yeah, so we gotta, so we, worry, to... we gotta worry about the heat shield bolts. Yeah, so we'll basically with the tank, uh, we cut this plate and we put the plate in there. Plate doesn't fit for these little bolt holes on the bottom, and on the back side, it had one of the bolts still in it. But the problem is to get these bolts started, you're going under the tank in this bracket here, and you're reaching over the top of the valve cover, and it's it's just it's not easy. My hands are. Pretty much the only hands that fit in there to get the nuts started or get the bolts started. It's really terrible. Really, that was not a lot of fun. And I'm sure I'm going to have to do it again for the fifth time. Yeah, but at least it's, we got daylight. We'll be okay for a little while. Uh, Papa got the new uh, power block here. He was able to pick it up from our local uh, tractor store. So we got a new one on here. So that's all new. Did he get a uh, fuel tech or fuel, fuel gauge? Uh, he ordered the fuel gauge. It was supposed it's to not going to be here till next week. Now it's next week. Next week. Yeah. It's, it's supposed to be this week. Monday or Tuesday. Uh, the seventeenth to the twenty eighth. So. The what came we, in was the new tack. We put the new tack on. Oh, uh, let already, me see the new tack. We've already put that in. Unfortunately, it's got a black ring around it instead of the chrome, so it's a little, you know, mismatched in colors. We didn't even look at that once it started. Once we had it started before. But we'll check out, we'll make sure that everything's working, well, these two at least are working properly. Oil pressure? Is that, that hooked up that stuff? That one's never worked. It's never worked? It's never worked. So we do need a new gauge for this. We just haven't ordered it. This thing's gonna be sweet. It'll be a good tractor once we're finally done with it. 
If we can give you guys some advice, get you an old guy. Old guy's got some experience and some knowledge. You know, this old guy's got some experience and knowledge, but he's never done this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I've never worked on a tractor either. So yeah, He's worked on tractors, but not the 12 volt conversion. Uh, you know, it's it's a little bit trickier when you get down, and grit, down to the nitty gritty like that. Hey, get back. There must be... All right, so we're going to plug along with this, and we'll check back with you guys when you have an update. We'll let you know when it starts. Yeah, she rich too. Woo. Check the sediment bowl. See if there's fuel in the bowl. There is. There's fuel in the bowl and there's fuel in the carburetor, I'm sure. That sounded painful. What happened? We were doing good. We were trying to figure out uh, why she kept starting and stalling. Then we realized we messed with the needle valve, which is... Partially. Partially in my hand. So the end of it has broken off inside the carburetor. So now we have to pull the carburetor. Pull the and uh, which we have never... I don't think we've taken off of this thing. We've never taken it off. Do you want to pull the sediment filter here too so we don't have to worry about this Teflon shit? Yeah, I can do that. That uh, we got we need a bigger one for that, Papa. Yeah. Uh five eighths. We'll pull that off. We'll have to drain all the fuel because you can see it's still. Yeah. That's just probably the bowl draining out is what my guess is. It's possible. The bigger. Oh, oh, no, five eighths. I think we'll have to drain all the fuel. You want to give them a quick rundown on this old technology while you're here working on it? Explain what that is right there. All right, so we have the sediment bowl here. You can see where, move this. see where the fuel line runs in here and in, down into the sediment bowl. So from the fuel pressure, from the pressure of the gas coming out of the fuel line here, it helps send it back up into the carburetor here. Also, with vacuum from the engine running and everything, it'll suck the gas out of the bowl, up through into the intake and into the engine. So, it's pretty simple. Oh, there's quite a bit of sediment in that. Yeah, I, I noticed that stuff. last week. But that's what these old sediment bowls are used for. So, we're going to pop this off. And uh, we'll, um, we'll see what happens. I don't know... If our local uh, tractor supply store is going to have anything for us, that might be a special order part for us. I'm going to move this banjo bolt for now. Sorry, Papa. You want to put this on the table, Papa? Okay, she's still leaking. Oh, it happened. You're right, it does. But I still feel bad that it happened. To me. <laughs> <laughs> to me. That's something that usually happens. To me. <laughs> so, but we do know that what our issue was with the, with it not starting at all, 
So while this is a part, we'll probably end up, I noticed that the bolt gauge wasn't working. Um, the uh, tack wasn't working either. So I think that this cable might be shot for the tack. So we'll probably have to order a new one of those. Um, the oil pressure sensor was starting to go up. The oil pressure gauge was actually working, which is, its I swear to you, it has not worked since we bought it and we've owned it for what, four years now, three years? I think like four years. It's three or four years. We're going to pull this carburetor off, see if we can extract that uh, the needle valve and stuff, and see if we can find a new one. Unfortunately, uh, I don't have another one laying around. <laughs> <laughs> As the old saying goes, you'll have that on them big enough. All right, so where'd we get to today? Nowhere. <laughs> Let's <laughs> see. Ooh. So uh, we figured out why she wasn't starting. We found out that our tack cable is bad. Because the uh, the end is broken off, so we gotta get a new tack cable. Our oil pressure gauge works now. Uh, the voltmeter isn't working. I'm not sure why. Found out that our fuel gauge does work, but the sending unit's bad, so we gotta get a new sending unit. The uh, what was that called? I just had it pulled up here. It is the carburetor load adjustment needle. So we found it online for a couple bucks, but we're gonna see if we can get, pick it up on Monday from right. one of the local stores, hopefully. Uh, if not, no big deal. Yeah, it's real enough where we live. There are tractor stores still around here. Yep. Uh, we cleaned the sediment bowl. Yeah, well, <laughs> we took the carburetor off because we broke the uh, piece here. So we gotta, I'm gonna clean the carburetor. We'll get a new uh, seal kit. So. Uh, yeah, we figured out, uh, I'm going to clean out the carburetor. We'll get this new piece, get a new uh, kit for that. Alrighty, so the old girl has been sitting here for quite a while. Pretty much, we didn't do anything over the winter. We covered her up, let her sit. I uh, rebuilt the carburetor. All new fittings and everything. Figured out, I think, I believe we talked about it, running a power wire over from this side to the other side for the coil to get a 12 volt constant granted she's not cold but switch on choke is in throttles all the way down and to fiddle with the carburetor a little bit to get it adjusted properly. You see here, we have power coming in here, going through this block here, coming up and then over. We had to run a 12 volt constant here to get it to run properly. I don't know if, why, this guy here didn't want to be our saving grace. I don't know. It works. It runs. The battery's charging properly. The oil pressure gauge is working for the first time. Uh, we put a new uh, tack cable on it. Went to put a new tack cable on it. And realized that this one here just has the square end. Whereas the original had basically like a keyway kind of to go in there. So we'll have to figure out uh, what kind of cable we need or if we have to replace that whole thing over here. We might have to replace the uh, end to get it right. But we'll see. But for right now, I mean, she starts. I've got to do little things. Uh, to continue on, like for the lights and whatnot, we got to switch all the lights over to 12 volt. But that's after it's on. We're going to run the wiring for it to the other side. We do have a switch somewhere in this massive mess. So we just have to drill out a hole over there to put the new toggle switch on. I'm going to keep plugging away. 
and hopefully we can get the old girl back together and uh we'll go from there all right so update from yesterday i went through oriented the heat shield properly uh noodles and papa had it backwards so oriented it properly put new bolts in there it's all tight the tank is solid this tank has never been solid on this tractor since we've owned it it's always been a little wobbly uh, so we always end up with fuel line leaks and stuff like that got the air box in place everything tightened up i had to go through and figure out more stuff the kit that the alternator and everything came with the instructions on it were very very limited so it was a lot of if you don't know how to do this you're kind of starting from scratch so we had to figure out how to do this i figured out that we had the wrong wires that's loose let's tighten that we had the wrong wires running to the voltmeter as you can see now she's sitting above thir right at 13 well, a little under 13. Uh, when it's charging or when it's running it sits right at 14. i went to change the fuel gauge here and i broke it you can see there's a little piece floating around in there now and every time you hook it up it just automatically reads full i ended up touching the ground to the positive yeah not smart don't do that should have the battery disconnected while working on all of this but i didn't and i just kind of went for it but now i know hey don't do that so our oil pressure works let's show you guys As you can see, our tack is not working. We have a stripped out gear in the tack. The cable's good, brand new cable, but the gear that's in here is not, it's not right. So I'm gonna have to go through and figure out how to fix this. Or if uh, Papa even wants to fix it, he might not. He might just say, whatever, leave it alone. Because it's not super important, but we would like to know how many hours we've put on it so we know for oil changes and stuff like that. Uh, power steering's working perfectly. And, yeah, we're just kind of putting along. I went through and I got new bolts for the battery tie down originally. And the battery is not touching this. Or the battery positive is not touching this. I made sure of it. I even wrapped it in black tape up through to make sure... But it's not touching it there's a nice little clearance in there but all that's tight got the negative tight originally we had the battery flipped the other way the negative was way back here or the positive was way back there and the negative was out here which would have been fine but felt like placing it this way was better so i have extra ground wires here because i know papa wants to put some like led lights on it uh for you know replace the two six volt lights up there put leds on there pod lights or something uh, he also wants to upgrade the rear tail light there. So we're almost done. I have to run a positive wire over to our toggle switch that Papa wants us to install for the lights. And then run a positive wire out. So this way we have it for when we have everything back together and the lights on. So we're the new fuel gauge from Amazon. It'll be here tomorrow. The uh, $15 on Amazon as compared to almost $40 at the auto parts store. So I figure save a couple bucks because I'm not going to be able to put everything together today anyway. Once this is on and I have the wiring done and everything's working properly, then I can go through, get the loader back on, which is going to be interesting because I don't know if I'm going to have any help. That might be just a fun, uh, uh, sh you know, it's going to be a fun crapshoot because of the way we had to take this off. So in order to lift it up properly, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it all oriented and in, in the correct position by myself. Uh, the only way to 
I probably could put everything back on. I know the only thing I absolutely can put on is the front grill, the front plate here. That covers up where the uh, spline goes there. But other than that, it's getting there. I'm uh, probably going to call it a day for now because it's, it's supposed to start raining. But it's supposed to be good tomorrow. Once that comes, I'm going to hook that up. I'm going to go from there. Alrighty, another day here. Got the new fuel gauge and tachometer. They came in the mail. Hooked them up. And voila. I tried adjusting this the best I could. Uh, very little fuel in here. So technically that is, the red is empty. I mean, it's the best I could do. I tried adjusting it in the tank, all that. I mean, there might be a way on here. Not 100% sure. I'm going to research a little bit to see what I can find out. But everything's working. The LEDs are working. Everything's backlit. I'm probably going to change this bulb out to LED if I can. If not, I really it really doesn't matter. Just having a more uniform. We're going to see if Papa wants to change out the oil pressure gauge. While well, it's easy to get to, he might not. He might just say leave it, which I don't blame him. It's not like this thing's going to be running at night all that often anyway. Uh, let see. The only reason I set these up to just be backlit when the key came on, because it was just easier to wire it up that way instead of having to worry about everything else. Let's see, go to the other side here. Gotta watch out for the landmines. I put the switch in for the lights. Run a positive wire over. Have the wire coming out, fusible link. And yeah, that's it's just about done. I'm just gonna kinda leave this hang. That we will hook up the lights later too once everything's on and I have to worry about it this is the ground wire for the lights oops yeah, they're stuck between the body panels this is the ground for the lights keep these next to each other and yeah I think I'm gonna go through and see what else I can do all right, I'm going to go, I believe this is the 7.8s here, and I'm going to try and pull this off without pulling this whole assembly off. I'm going to pull this off and check. I believe there's just a plastic gear in there that is all chewed up. I'll have to check it out. Uh, but yeah, so all the electrical's done. Everything's wired up properly. Well, to the best of my abilities anyway. And she's getting there. I mean, I'm got to get this thing going because I want to do my driveway. I'm going to get some pavement millings, some blacktop millings, which is just recycled blacktop. And this would come in very handy to help spread it all out. But, yeah, we have uh, extra ground here, which I thought I was going to need for the tank. But everything grounds itself together. So I'm just going to tie this up and out of the way. Probably just run it over here for now. And yeah. So I'm going to continue on. See what else I can get done. I think I'm probably done for today. I'll call Papa here in a few minutes and see what he wants to do. And uh, we're going to go from there. Alrighty, so here we are on the track there again today. We got the carburetor a little more dialed in. We're going to be trying to put the uh, bucket on. I told Papa and Archie that we at least got to get, they got to help me get the, the rear attached. The front I can do myself, but we at least got to need help getting the rear attached because we got to back the four-wheeler up on the rope that we have there to get this to pivot up to have somebody drive this in while somebody else is guiding it along 
and it's a it's a 12 man job with only three people so <laughs> so we're at least going to get that in and then as i said before to put the whole body panel on and everything i can do that after that's all on plus we'll have to run and get screws and bolts and you know figure out every single thing that we need for the old girl Alrighty, so we're gonna get that done and uh we're gonna go from there Alrighty, so we got the our uh our death trap of a setup here is disconnected we got the rear pins in we haven't caught or pinned them yet but the rear pins are in now we're going to have to jack up the front so we can bolt that plate to the bottom of the frame here and we have to line up the implement here the pump turns freely by hand so this way we'll be able to line it up we also have a ratchet strap here that pulls the pump out to give us that little extra clearance so we have that all the way seated and we're gonna get that done it's two bolts there two bolts here and then we're gonna start sliding together all the body panels pieces and everything to get her covered up and make her look pretty again she'll be whole so we're gonna continue on we're gonna get that done and uh i have no idea Alrighty, so we got her all back together. All the body panels are on. We're all good. Ran the, stuck the pod lights on. Ran new wiring down through. Put this, some of the uh, protector here. Didn't really need it. I mean, we could have just ran the exposed wires, but I wanted to make it look fancy. Uh, I have to get some more to run for the back, to run for the rear tail light. We did put a new one on. Little switch under here. So these work without the key being on. Uh, this way, if we're in an area that we can't see, we don't have to have the tractor running, especially with them being LEDs. We don't have to worry about them draining the battery as much. But she, uh, she starts right up. I'll show you. I'll turn our key on. We did put a little indicator light here showing you that the key is on. Even though all these light up, this is just a little extra. Hey, by the way, and uh, you can watch your start. I gotta do a little fine tuning on the carburetor, but we'll get there. So, I'm sure we'll have uh, more videos with using this thing. I wanna replace my uh, fence here, actually put like a real nice fence. So we're gonna use the post hole digger for that. You're gonna have a bunch of uh, stone coming in. So the bucket's gonna come in real handy for that. Uh, Papa has a plow for this. Unfortunately, it wasn't running for him for the winter season. But at the same time, it, we didn't get a lot of snow this year, thank goodness. So we're, uh, we're going to call her done for now. And next time we got to work on her, we'll let you know. If you like this kind of content, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when we're posting new videos. Also, follow us on Instagram at rusted underscore nut underscore repair. And, uh... We'll see you next time.